Prayer is not reserved for a certain time in a certain place. Prayer is not offered in one specific way. In fact, the Bible says we should pray continually. This kind of prayer can permeate every aspect of our lives. When we're alone or in a crowd, when it's quiet and when it's chaotic, when we feel like it and when we don't. This is what it means to pray with eyes wide open. The best time to pray, the absolute best time to pray is right now. Because you're always in the right now. You have millions of right now moments in your life. There's another one right there. There's another one. The best time to pray is right now. And we're going to be thinking about this reality that God calls us to pray continually. He opens the door for continual prayer. So, so when's the best time to pray? When a medical report comes and you don't get the news you were hoping for. Your heart should just move to prayer. Oh, God, I'm afraid. God, this isn't what I was planning on. This isn't what I was looking forward to. God, you, you made me in, in my mother's womb. You formed me. You know everything about me. So, God, I pray. God, I dare to pray. I pray for healing. I pray for your hand upon me to heal. God, I, oh, my family. God, comfort my family. Watch over them. God, give me your peace. Boy, when you hit one of those moments... That should be one of those moments where you just move into prayer. When good news comes, you're getting a new job or a promotion or a raise. <laughs> God, thank you. God, I thank you that people finally notice my hard work and my skills and my effort. That, God, that you're kind of raising me up. God, I, I bless you. I'm so excited. God, thank you for providing a little bit more money to help me and my family. And by the way, God, Help, uh, help, this is going to be a bigger challenge than I've had. I've got to learn new skills and work harder. God, help me through this. We should pray naturally in those moments when there's love in the air. She's been praying for months and years. God, bring a wonderful, godly man along. And he's finally come along. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I've been patient. I've been making the right choices. Thank you for bringing this person along into my life. Help me love them well and help me receive their love well. When a baby's born, parents begin to pray. Oh, Lord, help us know what to do. Help us know how to handle this. Lord, give us sleep. Um, <laughs> help us, Lord, help us through this time. Grandparents should start to pray. Lord, watch over my little granddaughter, my little grandson. Prayer should flow in and out of every moment of life. So you show up at church like you have this morning or online, following online, and you say, God, Teach me today. I'm praying, God. Teach me this day. And God, if there's something in your word that challenges the way I'm living or how I'm doing things, let me change my life to follow your word instead of trying to change your word to fit my life. That's a bold prayer. I hope today that you're praying, God, speak to me. Teach me. My heart is open. Move in my life. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 calls us to pray continually. This is a staggering biblical call to pray. 1 Peter 4, 7 says, be alert and of sober mind so that you can pray. Why? Because something happens every single time you pray. We pray because God answers us. R.A. Torrey reminds us that prayer is the key that unlocks the storehouses of God's infinite grace and power. All that God is and all that God has is at the disposal of prayer. The problem is, is that somewhere along the way, we've been limited 
to pray continually because we've been taught that the proper way to pray is to close our eyes. And what I found out was that if I limited my prayer to this posture of eyes closed, I prayed less. And then I experienced less of God's power that he wanted to give to me as his child. If we're going to pray continually, it will mean learning to pray at all times, in all situations, and in many cases, with our eyes wide open. It's the only way we can live out this biblical exhortation to pray continually. I was born and raised in Holland, Michigan. My parents both still live there. I'm able to go visit them on occasion a couple times each year. And when I get in their home, I become part of the rhythm and the routine of their home. My mom and dad wake up early, and one of the first things they do is they study the Bible together. They say a prayer together, but then my dad sits longer in his chair. He is a prayer warrior, and he prays every single morning for a considerable amount of time head bowed, eyes closed. Now, I was there two weeks ago. Without my dad knowing, I took a picture of him. That's my, my, my precious father. Now, he's not sleeping. He is praying. <laughs> I did ask permission, just so you know. So he said it was okay. He kind of chuckled that I had snuck upstairs and took the picture. But anyways, so when he's done praying every morning, then he goes for a morning walk, sometimes three, four, five miles. It doesn't matter what kind of weather. So when I'm there, I always join him. One particular February morning, and by God's grace, I had never taken a picture of my dad and I on our walk, but that morning, I took a picture. I have it saved. It was very cold. <laughs> that is me. <laughs> Anyways, we went on the walk, and at the end of the walk, I said to my dad, hey dad, I'm flying home tonight. Would you mind if we just prayed a couple of minutes? He said, I would love it. So I said, well, let's pray. All of a sudden, my dad shoves me to the side of the road. I start falling into the snow bank, and I know, I remember the thought that went through my mind. There's only one reason why my dad would push me to the side of the road. He must be saving me from a car that has slid out of control. So while I'm falling, I actually look to see the car for which he must be saving me from, but there is no car. I land back up, and I'm looking at him. By now, he's bending down trying to help me, and he's giggling. And I said, Dad, what happened? He said, I am so sorry, Sherry. When you said, let's pray, I just went into automatic prayer mode, and I closed my eyes. I said, Dad, you're not supposed to close your eyes when you're walking and praying. And we had a wonderful conversation about what it means to pray continually. I flew home that night. In the morning, I woke up and I received this email from my father. Dear Sherry, I thought about you this morning while I was walking. I prayed with my eyes open. I even prayed out loud. I learned from you that if I pray with my eyes open, my time with God is limitless. When I pray with my eyes open, my time with God is is limitless. You see, God is with us in each and every situation that we're in. Every moment at every, of every day, you are never alone. He has overcome, we sang this morning, and I always think, then I ask him to come over. Remind me that he is there. Praying with eyes open can be difficult in theory and in practice, though, and there's a good reason. I still remember... Uh, one of our first weeks at Corinth Reformed Church, Kevin was asked to be the lead pastor 25 years ago. When we got there, they were celebrating 100 years. In 100 years, they had only used organ and piano. Kevin, of course, wanted to introduce um, drums and guitar and knew that would be very difficult for these godly people. But he knew it needed to happen. And so, the Sunday he brought in a set of a percussion and, and a guitar, he started the worship service off by reading the Bible, Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. And then it went on. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. And then verse five, praise him with the clash of cymbals. And at that moment, he had the drummer hit the cymbals. 
Praise him with resounding cymbals and a little bit louder. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He's, and then he said to them, for the first time in a hundred years, this church has followed the teaching of Psalm 150. Got him. <laughs> You know what? He wanted these wonderful, godly people to know that it was biblical, to have symbols in the sanctuary. Well, I'm going to kind of do the same thing this morning. I want to show you that it's biblical to pray with your eyes open. And so I'm going to be taking you through a couple of passages quite quickly, but I want you to know, you see, the Bible never says that we need to close our eyes when we pray. In fact, as I was working on developing this book, I found out that there's not one place in the whole scriptures that you will read and they close their eyes and they prayed. And so I want to look at a couple passages with you. My first one is found in Genesis. And we find that many people in the Bible prayed with their eyes wide open. Genesis 24, starting with verse 12, what's happening here is Abraham's servant was asked to find Abraham's son, Isaac, a wife. We actually have a record here of the prayer the servant prays as he has his eyes open looking for that wife, for Isaac. Listen to the prayer. Then he prayed, Lord, God of my master Abraham, make me successful today and show kindness to my master Abraham. Listen to what he says. I love this. He's talking to God. See, I am standing beside this spring. He's saying, I know you see me. Uh, look at me. See, I am standing beside this spring. And the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. Before he had finished praying, Rebecca comes out and he sees the answer to his prayer. And then the servant hurried to meet Rebecca. Again, later in that chapter, uh, he retells about his prayer. And in verse 45, he says this. Before I finished praying in my heart, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder, engaging in life, praying continually, experiencing the power of God. Then another passage is Nehemiah. And in Nehemiah chapter 2, we find Nehemiah feeling called to leave his post as the king's cupbearer. He is burdened that Jerusalem's walls needed to be built. One day the king notices his sadness and asks him why he is so sad. Here's the passage, Nehemiah 2, into verse 1. I had not been sad in his presence before. So the king asked me, why does your face look so sad when you're not ill? This can be nothing but sadness of heart. I was very much afraid. But I said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad? When the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire. See, we're right in the middle of a conversation. The king says to me, well, what is it you want? Then I prayed to the God of heaven and I answered the king. You see what's happening? It was right in the middle of a conversation. He's praying with his eyes open. The conversation didn't stop. He didn't pull off to the side. And he says, if it pleases the king... And if your servant has found favor in his sight, let him send me to the city in Judah where my ancestors are buried so that I can rebuild it. You see, he was praying in the middle of a conversation. Also, we find in the gospel many times, Jesus prayed with his eyes open. If Jesus prayed with his eyes open, it is good for us as well. In John 17, we find the longest prayer recorded that Jesus gave. It was, it's called the high priestly prayer. And he prayed it as, as he was nearing the cross. He had been talking to the disciples. And in John 17, 1, listen to what it says about his posture. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son may glorify you. See, Jesus' posture of prayer was eyes wide open, looking to heaven, speaking to his father. It is biblical to pray with your eyes open. If you pray with your eyes open, 
you will pray more and you will experience more of God's presence and his power. So while Sherry was working on this book, a good friend of ours, a good friend who's now uh, with Jesus in heaven, but Nabil Qureshi at the time was doing his PhD in New Testament at Oxford. And he called us to talk about some ministry and life things, and we had him on speaker. So we're talking with Nabil, and near the end of the conversation, we talked about kind of Nabil's topics that he was thinking about. And then he said to uh, Sherry, he said, hey, Sherry, what, how's your book coming along? She says, coming along great, and she was in the middle of working on it. And he said, you know, tell me just like in a few sentences, what's the central focus of the book? She says, really, it's about praying with your eyes open, meaning literally open and figuratively, noticing what's happening around you so you're praying all day long. And then Sherry made the comment, you know, Nabil, in the entire Bible... It never says you have to close your eyes when you pray. And in the entire Bible, there's never even an example of anybody closing their eyes. And Nabil's response was, I think you're wrong. (laughs) And so Sherry very graciously said, well, then Nabil, help me out. Why don't you study? And if you find something where it shows that and shows me, let me know. So Nabil said, I will. And Nabil is a good student, or was a good student of the Bible. And so anyways, uh, sometime later, we're talking again with Nabil. And I said, hey, Nabil, did you do that research on praying with eyes open? He says, yeah, Sherry's right. And I said, yeah, I've been married to her for a long time. I've been told that many, many times. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but, uh, Amen. They, oh, whoa. <laughs> and so I said, yeah, I said, I, I had done the same thing. I had done some, some study there. And, and, and the point is not that you can't close your eyes when you pray. The point is, if you want to pray continually, there's going to be some times you have to pray with your eyes open. And, and so if everybody looks up here, here's the thing. You can pray like this. Eyes closed, fold, hands folded. You can pray like this with your eyes open, looking around. And also, there's freedom in our bodies and how we pray. If we're going to pray continually, then there's lots of postures, physical postures for prayer. So, so think about that. Uh, and there's examples all through the Bible. In 2 Samuel chapter 7, 2 Samuel 7, 18, King David has gone from being a shepherd boy to being persecuted and chased around the countryside by the person who was king at that time, Saul. And now he's getting to where he's going to take his role of leadership. It's a big time for him. And here's what we read in 2 Samuel 7, 18. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord. And he said, who am I, sovereign Lord? And what is my family that you have brought me thus far? He just begins to pray sitting down. It's fine to sit and pray. That's an appropriate posture. As a matter of fact, what we're going to learn is, is any posture is fine. If you're praying continually, you can be in lots of different postures. Well, now his son Solomon has, has finally built the temple. David wanted to build, build the temple, but God said it's going to be for your son to do. Solomon has built the temple, and they're going to dedicate the temple, this amazing, beautiful temple in Jerusalem to God. They're going to dedicate it to God. And he does his prayer, and I want to read the beginning of his prayer and the end of his prayer. And there's a really long prayer in between for all kinds of things about people coming to the temple and worshiping God and meeting God there. But here's how he begins in 1 Kings 8, verse 22. Then Solomon, and now watch this now, stood before the altar of the Lord in front of the whole assembly of Israel. All the people are gathered. He's standing. He spread out his hands toward heaven, and he said, and here's his prayer, Lord, the God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or the earth below. You who keep your covenant of love with your servants who continue wholeheartedly in your way. And he just stands and prays with his hands lifted. The people are gathered. He's praying. Standing, hands lifted. Now, here's what's interesting. There's a really long prayer. You can study that on your own. But we get to the end of the prayer. Still in 1 Kings 8. We're now in verse 54. When Solomon had finished all these prayers and supplications to the Lord, he rose from before the altar of the Lord where he had been kneeling with his hands spread out towards heaven. He stood and blessed the whole assembly of Israel in a loud voice saying, praise be to the Lord. And he gives them this word of blessing. Solomon starts the prayer Standing, hands lifted. By the time the prayer is over, he's changed his posture. He is now kneeling before the Lord with his hands lifted. In the middle of the prayer, he changed his posture. Is that allowed? Of course it is. Because prayer is something that happens in the flow. And it was a long prayer. It's a long prayer. It's, the whole, it's almost a whole chapter. So, so you can sit when you pray. That's Okay. You can stand and lift your hands when you pray. You can kneel when you pray. And then there's this beautiful picture in Acts chapter 20, verse 36. The apostle Paul is gathered the elders from the church in Ephesus, and he's telling them goodbye, and they're not going to see him again. And here's the picture. When Paul had finished speaking, he knelt down with all of them. 
and prayed. Here they all are together on their knees, praying together. They all wept as they embraced him and kissed him. What grieved them the most was his statement that they would never see his face again. And then they accompanied him to the ship. And off he went to Rome. Off he went to, to an imprisonment, to a difficult season. It's absolutely fine to close our eyes when we pray. And if, but if we're going to pray continually, there'll be lots of times we need to have our eyes wide open. We can pray with our eyes closed. We can pray with our eyes open. We can pray when we're sitting, when we're kneeling, when we're standing. In any and every circumstance, we can pray. And, and here's what we have to understand. If we're going to pray continually, this 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 call to pray continually, we've got to learn to pray in situations we might not. So when you're driving your car, you're the one driving and you want to pray. Can I give you a suggestion? Keep your eyes, what? Wide open. <laughs> Pay attention and pray while you drive. When you're in a work situation and there's conflict and you feel your blood temperature going up and your heart's starting to race and this person's out of line or they're loud or they're in your face, don't get on your knees and raise your hands. Oh God, I pray. I mean, that would be a little, little odd. But as they're talking, just in your heart, Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, help me keep my mouth shut. Lord, help, Lord, you know I'm getting fired up here. Lord, give me patience. But, in your, own, but your, your, your eyes are open. You're interacting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But then say, Lord, help me. Help me. In that, you know, you're in that prayer place. That's a good time to keep your eyes open. We have a friend who's a, who uh, delivers babies for a living. He's an OBGYN. He's part of Shoreline Church. And he would tell you, when it gets complex, when something's going on, when the baby's at risk or the mom's at risk, he's, too, he's fully focused and working, but he's saying, just quickly, God, give me wisdom. God, give me strength. God, protect this baby. He'd say, I, he's praying. He's not praying out loud. He's not closing his eyes, but he's praying. We pray continually. If you're raising children, boy, if you said, well, every time there's a challenge raising my kids, I'm just gonna go get on my knees and close my eyes. You're never getting off your knees. I mean, it doesn't matter if they're four or 14 or 24. There's a lot of prayer going on, but just, you just pray in the flow of the day. And this is the picture. This is God's desire for us. Imagine if all of us just were praying throughout our day, eyes wide open, what God can do in us and through us. What is prayer? In its simplest form, prayer is about this ongoing relationship that you have with God. It's talking to God. It's listening to God. It's doing life in the presence of God. My journey of praying with eyes wide open has done more than just grow my prayer life. It's transformed my understanding of who God is. And it's brought more of an intimacy with my Savior. And then I find that I want to pray more. And then as I want to pray more, I see him working and I grow more in love with him and understand how great he is. He is honored and glorified when we pray more. Prayer in its simplest form is about being aware of his presence, being aware of his love for us, and being aware of the power that he has offered to come into our lives and to make a difference in the world. Everything we believe about prayer hinges on what we believe about who God is and our relationship to him. The Apostles' Creed, which is our earliest Christian creed, I love how they crafted the first line. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe it was very intentional that they made Father the first word for God. They could have made Maker, but they wanted us to get, they wanted the church to get that you have a perfect Father. And in that, in that place of being a perfect Father, then he's almighty. He's your Maker. I believe in God the Father almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. As our Father, God is present and powerful. In the book of Exodus, chapter 3, God meets with Moses in a burning bush. And he tells Moses, you're the man that I'm choosing to lead my people out of slavery. Now Moses has a couple of questions for God, and they're recorded right here. Exodus 3, verse 11 
But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? I understand that question. But the question is focused on how am I going to do this thing you called? God answers him with just the right answer. He says, I will be with you. The focus was on him and his own ability. I think that's how we live our own lives so much. We come across a problem and we're trying to figure it out. We forgot who is with us. God is reminding Moses that the focus should be on who is with him. Praying continually puts God at the center of our attention, his rightful place. You see, prayer creates open places for God to lead. Now, Moses has his second question. Moses says to God in verse 13, suppose I go to the Israelites and I say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? And this would be the character of who he is. Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. That was the answer. It's essentially the same answer as the first question. It's all about what I can do for you when I walk with you and when I empower you. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. Still his name today. The name by which I am to be remembered from generation to generation. You see, God's name forever, I am. I am present I am what you need. His name points to his presence in our life and to his provision. The great I am, his presence provides what we need. Do you need strength for this day? God gives his name, I am strength. Do you need hope? Have you come in here discouraged and depressed? Remember who is with you, and he is telling you, I am hope for you. The great I am. John 10, 14 says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. This is about this ongoing relationship that gets developed by praying continually. Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. We say that, but do we live with that reality? Praying continually helps us to experience the truth that we can lack nothing when we walk closely with him. Ken Davis, a Christian comedian, has a, a t-shirt with a cartoon on it. And on, the, on this cartoon, there's a lamb on its hind legs and it's walking on a pathway. And to the left, there's some ferocious animals with beady red eyes and teeth. And from the picture you get from those animals, they're thinking, that's my dinner. The lamb is walking confidently, not because of the lamb itself, but the lamb is holding on to someone, and that someone is Jesus. And he, as he walks by those ferocious animals, he's pointing to the person he's with. And above it, there's a bubble, and this is what he's saying. I'm with him. <laughs> I'm with him. This lamb has it right. We forget sometimes who is with us and what power does he want to provide for his children? Whatever you need at any moment, you can go to God. He is the great I am. So my challenge for you this week is that the next time you come up against some trouble, some fear, some frustration, some point of anxiety, 
I hope by the power of the Holy Spirit that you'll be reminded of this moment and maybe even think about that picture on that, that cartoon to bring a deep spiritual truth to your heart. Remember who you're with. Remember the power that he has, Almighty Father, and ask. God says, I am the great I am. I am with you. He has what you need. Ask him. And I have a suspicion that, I have a su suspicion that if I said right now, let's pray, most of you would bow your heads and close your eyes automatically. <laughs> and so I want to think together and I want to talk together just for a moment about some ways to start praying with your eyes wide open because you've got to start to practice this. We want to be people that pray continually. It's not that we have to pray continually, it's that we can. God is with us, he's holding our hand, he's there. We can talk to him and he will unleash his power as we pray. So how do we start down that road? Here, here's five ways to start praying with your eyes wide open, just to get you started, okay? Number one, when you see something beautiful. When you see something beautiful. Just don't close your eyes, keep looking at it. Say, God, thank you for this beautiful coastal area that we live along. Thank you for this beautiful Salinas Valley. Thank you for this person you put into my life. God, the best thing of all that God created is people. God, thank you for the beauty of the people around me. Every time you see something beautiful, let it be a chance to look at it, see the beauty, and just start talking to God quietly in your heart, out loud, and thank God. Number two, when you're feeling thankful. When something happens and you're just feeling thankful, like a, like a knee-jerk, reflexive response, pray. Thank you, God. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this person. Sometimes you have those moments where you've gone through something and you get to the other side and you say, man, I just know I could have been in big trouble. I've had you this feeling that God was protecting you. You know, I just think God protected me through that. Thank you, God, for protecting me. Someday in heaven, I'll see how you really did it. But in my heart, I'm feeling it. Thank you. Just thank God every time you have an opportunity. Number three, when conflict and tension arise, when there is conflict, when there is tension, in your home, in your heart, in your workplace, at your school, in your neighborhood, in your social settings. Just start to pray. You say, man, if I pray every time there's conflict and tension, I'll be praying all the time. <laughs> you know? But better to be, do pray when you're thankful, and then you'll get more thankful things, don't you? Know? But, but it's good, thankful, tension, whatever it is. But just begin to say, God, I'm just feeling so wound up right here. I'm so nervous. I'm afraid of this. And cast it before the Lord. Talk to him about it. And pray when times are difficult. Number four, when a friend shares a story of pain, loss, or struggle. You're talking with somebody, and they're going through a tough time, and we all know people who are going through tough times. And in that moment, as they're sharing, don't just think, oh, that's too bad, but actually say, you know, I'll be praying for you. And in your own heart, begin to pray, or maybe even look at them and say, can I pray for you right now? Oh, sure, that'd be great. And you can close your eyes or keep them open, but say a prayer right then. So what if the person who's sharing their trouble is not a Christian? I say to non-Christians a lot when they share struggles, hey, can I just take a moment and pray for you right now? I still never to this day had anyone tell me no. People are longing for prayer and there's power in prayer. So when you hit those moments, move to prayer automatically. When you drive by or walk by a church, every time you go by a church, you're driving down Highway 68 and you pass Cypress Church up on the hill there. Pray for Pastor Ben and his wife, Joni, and pray for Cypress Church for God's blessing on them. You're driving here to Shoreline, and you pass the Nazarene Church right across the street. Pray for Pastor John, and pray for their congregation and for God's blessing. You're in Carmel, and you drive by uh, Carmel Presbyterian Church. Pray for Pastor Rick and the team there and for their congregation. As you pass churches in Seaside and, and, and anywhere you go, out in Salinas, there's lots of churches. You say, well, if I'm praying every time I drive or walk by a church, I'll be praying. If I'm doing all, these, if I'm doing all five of these things, I'll be praying all day. Exactly. Talk with God, interact with God, and then understand that praying with eyes wide open is not just literal, physical eyes open. It's also figuratively. Pay attention. Keep your, the eyes of your heart open so you see needs in people's faces. Slow down as you're going through Costco and weaving your way through the lines of people and look at people's faces. And when somebody seems sad, just right there as you're walking along, just, oh, Lord. I just feel a heaviness on them. Would you pray for them? Would you bless them? And as you talk with God, this relationship grows and his power is unleashed. And so here's this week's prayer challenge. I'm gonna give you four challenges. Pick one of these. All right, just say today, I'm gonna to try one of these in the coming days. Number one, try a new posture. 
say, you know, I've never prayed standing with my hands lifted. I just have never done that. I'm kind of a sit in a chair, bow my head prayer. Then just try it sometime. Just lift your eyes to heaven and lift your hands and stand and pray. Say, I don't really kneel when I pray much. Then try kneeling when you pray. Maybe you don't ever pray when you're out walking around. Just when you're walking around your neighborhood or walking, just begin praying. Try a new posture of prayer. Number two, open your eyes when you would normally close them in prayer. Pick a time when you almost always automatically, and you're going to notice it in the next couple of days. When, when you're praying at a meal, you're going to go boom, and you're going to, well, maybe I'll, is this allowed? Can I look around? You know? You're in a group of people in a, a shoreline growth group. And actually, we're starting new growth groups with this, and there's sign ups today out by the book table. If you want to go sign up for a growth group, you can still do that. So maybe you're in a growth group of a dozen people in someone's living room, and at the end of the time, you say, well, let's just pray for each other. And their people are praying. I keep my eyes open a lot when I'm in a group praying. You know why? I look at the person praying. And I, can, I get more of their expression and their passion when I can see them. And I have a hard time when I close my eyes, I just get distracted. I actually get more focused when I'm looking at the person leading in prayer. So now you're in a growth group and, and somebody's praying. And so you, you kind of look up and you're going to look at them while they're praying. And you look at somebody else and they've opened their eyes because they were at church too. And now your eyes meet and you both go, ah, you know, and you bow your head with, I got caught, I got caught peeking, right? Nodding. No, no, just look at them and smile. Is that allowed? Of course it is. When we were praying before the service today. I looked at Ricky, who's one of our camera operators, and he was with us for prayer. And he had his eyes open. I looked at him, we saw eye to eye, and just kind of smiled and kept on praying. But just try opening your eyes when you might normally close them. Number three, pray first. Find a life situation where your first response is to worry or get anxious. And just say, I'm with him. Jesus is with me. I'll talk to Jesus about this instead of being anxious. And then seek to notice people and pray. As you go through your day, notice the people around you. If they seem delighted and joyful, pray thanks for them. If they seem heavy, you may even say how you're doing. And leave, but notice, slow down and notice people. So I'm going to ask Sherry to come and join me here. I'm going to ask you as a congregation, if you're able physically to do so, would you stand with us? We're going to close with a couple songs, just, just, just reflecting on this reality, asking God to take us deeper in prayer. So I'm going to ask my wife to lead us in prayer. When, as we go to pray, you may have your eyes closed. That's okay. You may have your eyes open. I'm going to keep my eyes open and look at all of you as we're praying together. But Sherry, would you lead us in a closing prayer? Dear Father in heaven, you are good to us. You are great. You are the great I am. And you have so much more to offer us than we can even begin to imagine our hope. Lord, as we cry out to you this week, please continue to reveal who you are and what how you want to touch us, Lord. I pray for each person here that as they pray more, that they will experience more of your presence, more of your power, and that they, they would find their life changed and they would impact the world more because of your presence in them. So send us out, Lord, as salt and light in the world filled with your goodness and your glory, and we will give you all the praise that is due your name in Jesus alone. Amen. So will you do this with me the next three weeks? Sure. Okay, great. <laughs> let's, let's, with all of our hearts, let's worship, all right? Thank you.